Hi, folks. This is Harold Ree of the Studio Mouth Podcast. Here's a bonus clip of my conversation with Peter Muller of Raptor Aircraft. He talks about the future of his plane, the future of his company, as well as a future vision of how less expensive aviation could change the world. Yeah, well, let me take a minute just to tell you kind of like looking, and we talked a little bit about what the future possibilities are just for the power the power plant. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the future possibilities for the aircraft, I mean, even for somebody who doesn't have their pilot's license, who gets excited about this, there's only going to be a certain number of people per year who say, yeah, I want to put the time in to get my pilot's license. Because, you, you know, the 40 hours that you have to do will get you a private license. That won't allow you to fly this thing above 18,000 feet. Um, and it won't allow you to fly in the clouds. You mm-hmm. still have to get an instrument rating for that. And that usually is like another 30 hours of flying. Mm-hmm. And it's more involved because, you know, you do have to understand a lot more about the weather mm-hmm. and you have to be able to, you know, communicate with air traffic control on a regular basis because that's what you do when you fly in the system. So for a lot of people, they might be like, well, that's that's a lot of work, you know, and I don't know if I have the time to do that. And it won't cost them a lot of money because they'll already have their plane if they mm. decide to buy one mm. and they'll just be paying for an instructor to come and sit with them for the $50 an hour or $60 an hour for those number of hours that they need the instruction. Um, but where I see this plane hopefully heading is that, you know, several years after we have um, the experimental version of it flying and we've got a bunch of customers out there flying in their aircraft, we can um, opt to try and get it certified uh, as a production aircraft um, through the FAA, which is a generally a lengthy pro- a mm. process and it's right. a costly one too. But there are other a- avenues you, know, you can go and get it certified in Europe or in Canada and then sort of piggyback that certification into the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, but the U.S. Uh, FAA here is also talking about easing up the what it takes to get a new design certified. Mm. Uh, but if we if we can be successful at that, and I imagine that you know once people see what this aircraft can do, mm. and they see its utility, that there's going to be a lot of people sort of saying, you've got to get this certified right. because we want to be able to produce, you know, thousands and thousands of them every year right. and not right. just, you know, a thousand every year. Wow. And so if we can get it certified, that changes a lot of stuff, stuff because you've got loads and loads of um, commercially rated pilots that are out there that are, you know, former military or former airline pilots That's or right. even current, you know, airline sure. pilots. Sure. And, with a commercial license, they could operate this thing kind of like a taxi. Wow. I didn't, I, yeah, that makes so much sense, right? Yeah. And because it would be a cheap for them to buy. So, you know, they want to be a single operator mm-hmm. and maybe they, you know, come in under the umbrella of a, of a parent company that, that helps organize everything for them. And they, they work for that parent company or they work as an owner operator where mm-hmm. they buy their own aircraft and they work part mm-hmm. of you know, a company, maybe it might be like an Uber for the air or something right. like that, where they can work their own hours or that sort of stuff. These guys would love to have their Absolutely. own plane and just be able, that's their job, flying people around in a nice, comfortable plane right. and, and get paid for it. And because the, you know, the purchase price is so reasonable, you know, if we can keep the price around one hundred twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollars, they're buying their, their, you know, their tool for their work for next to nothing compared right. to what, you know, like a truck driver can spend a half a million dollars on buying a truck. Sure. And because this is so cheap to operate, 38 miles to the gallon, they they can fly it around all day long and make a really good amount of money, even, you know, charging people less than what it would cost on the airlines with more convenience. Hmm. So it's not hard to run the numbers and see that these guys can actually make a really good living out of that job and offer a service at way less than it is in the airlines and cheaper than it is to drive anywhere. Hmm. And so you could have thousands of these, not just in the US, but all around the world, working as an air taxi service in and out of small airports, not, you know, not the ones necessarily served by the airlines, but you can still fly in and out of those ones. Right. And for cheaper than it is you know, to go and drive somewhere. So can, you know, living here in the Bay Area, and, you know, personally, I kind of have a dream here. There's a great little spot out here just down by where Candlestick Park was where they could put like a 2,000-foot runway in there. <laughs> and, 
you could literally Why jump. Not? Yeah, jump in your Uber car down here, and it's from where we are here. It's only ten minutes away. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. could be be there in like a, a third of the time, or you know, half the time it takes to get to San Francisco International. Hey, by the time they ever build this California bullet train, all right, right? right? I mean, so much. It, it could take you one place. Yeah. Right. This with a thing, you could go up to Tahoe, Vegas, Reno, mm-hmm. Oregon, over to Hawaii. You do it whatever right. you want. But yeah, can you imagine if you had like, you know, thousands of these aircraft flying all around the world, and you had like a little app on your phone that said, "Okay, I want to go, I want to go down to LA, or I want to go up to Tahoe, or mm-hmm. something," mm-hmm. and you just basically book a flight through one of those, and you 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 know, rock up at the small little airport, and you just get out of your Uber car into your yeah. Uber plane, and and you're off. Yeah. And it's comfortable. It has enough room for your luggage, and it's going to cost you less than driving. Right. So you're you're flying private without the flying private price, which yeah. right now is, it's usually you hate to say it for usually for the rich and famous or for those for those folks who fly themselves. Yeah. Um, this uh, this this at least the way you're conceptually talking about it is going to be a game changer, right? Abs- a, totally a game changer, and in fact. You know, if if this was an Uber style service, it would cost you more per mile to take your Uber car to the airport than it would to take your Uber plane to you know sure. Tahoe or LA. Sure, you're getting better money value for mile Cause flying because you're, you're not fighting the traffic. Yeah, um, you know you don't have to deal with the commute. It's, it's seriously, you, it's going to cost you. You know, like from here to if there was a small well here here to uh san francisco international mm-hmm. in an uber is about 20 something dollars mm-hmm. right and it's it's like 10 15 miles mm-hmm. right so if you think about that flying up t- to tahoe in something like this and depending on how they price it be basically the same you're just paying for the aircraft mm-hmm. uh, i imagine that you know flying up to tahoe you know two two people and you could take up to four people as well as the pilot in there uh, you know, one way should only cost maybe about, you know, 80 or $90 for mm-hmm. the aircraft, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and the guy who's flying it is making a decent profit. Right. Wow. So. All right. Well, Peter, <laughs> Peter, get, get you got to stop talking to me and get back to work, right? Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the, the next, the next step here is that we're, you know, finishing off uh, the structural design and the. And I've got to make the changes, the aerodynamic changes that from the you know the other verification that's just been finished, and then uh, we're actually going to be looking for um, deposits from people who are willing to put down like a twenty thousand um, dollar non-refundable deposit, mm-hmm. and in return for that they'll get you know that's obviously goes towards their particular aircraft, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but we're also going to give them as a bonus um, a small percentage of the company. Mm. Um, for stepping up yeah. and so with that money we're going to use to actually build a prototype and so that that will be we'll be announcing that more in, in more detail in, in the coming next couple of months once we've got all this um, structural analysis finished exciting so so um twenty thousand dollar deposit they'll get part ownership yeah uh, and I hope a free T-shirt, right? Yeah, of course, uh, yeah, a free T-shirt. A free t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I would say I would take the free T-shirt. This will only, this will only be right? for a handful of people. There'll be maybe 30, hmm. 30 people that we're going to have this open to because that's that's all the money that we need to build a prototype. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I, so after that, those people will be actually fairly lucky because the company may end up being worth a lot of money in the end, and they'll have a little piece of it. Um, but at the same time, they're not risking a lot, mm-hmm. and they're. You know, the money that they are putting in is towards their aircraft. So mm-hmm. it's not like just, they're not just investing in the company. They're it's a deposit. They're mm-hmm. putting down a deposit, but you know, they're taking the chance that maybe something will happen and something will go wrong, and they may lose their money. But you know, the upside is that if if things do go well, they've got a, mm-hmm. a share of the company. You know. Last question for me, really: w- What if a venture capitalist? You know, we're we're here in the heart of Silicon Valley. What if a venture capitalist just said to you, "Hey, I'll just I will just fund everything." I'll just fund everything. I mean, what would that be something that you would even consider at this point? Or it would depend. Um, I've kind of stayed away. We had several different people come to us and say, you know, we're willing to fund this whole thing or whatever. But I'm very sort of pushed back about that because it's really easy for somebody to mess this whole thing up. Mm. And it'd be really easy for maybe, you know, if a VC came in here and said, you know, we'll give you, you know, a million dollars to, you know, 
get this thing, the prototype flying. In exchange for X, Y, Z. Yeah, right. whatever. It, it'd be really easy for them at that point. They own a big share of the company. And for a million dollars, they probably want the whole company, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, it would be really easy for them to turn around and take an offer from somebody like Cirrus, who just wants to shut this whole thing down mm-hmm. because this is going to hurt their business. Sure. I mean, if they're selling their, you know, and Cirrus, Cirrus sells about 350 aircraft a year now. And, you know, for $500,000 an aircraft. So when we have this out and, you know, it's a quarter of the price Mm. for a much better aircraft, do you think they're going to be selling 350 aircraft a year? The only difference they have is they're a certified design. Mm. And so they can get those people who don't want to participate at all in building their kit. And we didn't really talk about that, but the, the kit process would be that anybody who buys one of these would have to come and spend two weeks at our facility to actually they put their hands on every part and put a whole bunch of stuff together Mm -hmm. so they understand how it all goes together then they qualify for having their name on the experimental certificate Mm -hmm. and that's the real really the only difference from this and a certified aircraft apart from the certified aircraft has gone through millions of dollars and getting everything Mm -hmm. you know Certify, but this will be just as safe as that because we're doing all the same stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it w- that's the problem with taking money from one particular person. It would be too easy for them to come in and just get an offer from somebody else who wants to shut this whole thing down. Yeah. And like any new technology, we saw the same thing with you know the electric EV cars back in the '90s that were just shut down, yeah. taken away, and then you're back to using all the old technology again purely because somebody didn't want their business disturbed right. and that could easily happen with this design if if we let you know if i let one person have too much say over it so this whole idea of us just taking uh you know a bunch of people 30 different people deposited is no one's going to have enough control to say anything like that yeah. to let that happen and it's my goal to try and keep this all together so it actually becomes a reality instead of just have it fall along the wayside and like there's been a lot of designs in the past that have just fallen along the wayside. nobody's tried to do the same thing i'm trying to do with terms of cost mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they've all tried different designs and things like that so yeah. Yeah. it's really important to me that I try everything that I can you know, with all my effort to make sure that this turns out to be the program that I want it to be. It's mm-hmm. not so much about the aircraft. I want everybody to experience flying yeah. in a small plane and, and, you know, get it, the whole culture. It'd be great to have kids go into high school and them have a class where they can do flight ed, mm. you know, and get their pilot's license while they're in high school. Yeah. Same way they, you know, get their driver's license. That then the world would be completely different if everybody Huge was vision. Yeah. Huge vision. Huge vision. I is. love it. You got to start big and then work yeah. your way back to reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're. It you, sounds like you're. You're quite a few steps ahead of a lot of other folks. So thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you. It's amazing. How do folks find you? How do folks actually learn about Raptor Aircraft? We have a pretty detailed website on uh, it's raptor-aircraft.com. And uh, there's all sorts of information, loads of pictures and renderings and stuff of the design there. And they can read all the specifications and all sorts of different things there. And if they're interested in, um, in you know, putting down a deposit or getting involved or working with us or whatever, helping out in some way, because we're going to bring more people in when we need help as we start building the prototype. Um, yeah, they can contact us. There's information on our contact page on the website. And then how about your Facebook page? You want to we that? do. Yeah, we do have a Facebook page. They can find that. Um, it's just facebook.com um, slash Raptor Aircraft. There's no mm-hmm. dash in there. Um, so they can find that. And there's a, that's also linked up off of our main website as well. So they can find that there. And, you know, generally I try and um, send out updates. We have a mailing list as well that they can subscribe to. And I send out updates every couple of weeks just to say, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing now. So people can sort of, you know, ride along with us. And you know, we have, I don't know, 360 something people on our mailing list. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good, vibrant little community of people, but hardly anybody knows about us. Yet. Gotcha. But yeah. coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. Be, yeah. It's going to make a big, a big noise when we get there the prototype flying and you know we're hoping that we start uh, construction here in in the summer in you know another three three or four months we should be able to get started with the construction and then i'm hoping that we can get the prototype flying within within 12 months of that it may take 18 yeah but i'm i'm planning i'm scheduling it to try and get it done in in 12 months to get it the, the prototype flying thanks to peter muller of raptor aircraft i hope you enjoyed that 
you can find today's show notes at studiomouth.com forward slash 11. That's the number 11. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our handle is at Studio Mouth Podcast, as well as Twitter, more simply at Studio Mouth. Well, that's it from us, folks. Have a great day. See you next time.